Hello and welcome, this is Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator, back with a really nice video for you today. I'm back in the studio, um, my makeshift um, studio in the garage. Unfortunately, I've not got the funds yet to finance a nice little unit or even, well, yeah, let's not even go there. I've not even got my Porsche yet, have I? How long have I been doing YouTube now? Should be getting a Porsche. Surely should be having a Porsche or sponsorship from somebody. Never mind. Anyway, you've seen the thumbnail. We're talking about Technos paint. And if you're a professional painter and decorator in in the world of painting, that obviously you've probably, <laughs> you've probably already heard of Technos paint. If you're a semi-professional stroke amateur DIYer, Technos paint is one of the com I'm going to say one of the companies that are starting to filter into the UK. They're a they're a Finnish company, i.e., from Finland. Founded in around about 1948, they're still a family owned business and they're now, I don't want to say the word drip feeding, but they're now starting to get their products um, into the UK. Now we're looking at a quality, I'm not, not, I'm not going to say top high end or anything like that, but we are looking at quality um, paint. It's in your reach of budget. They're not overly expensive. Please, please check online because if I say to you now how much paints are, you'll go, oh, Phil, but when I'm watching this video in 12 months, three years, five years time, they've changed. So please check online what the prices are of the paints, but they're not a cheap paint. They're not an overly expensive paint. And I would say, give it a, give it a try. But I've not even told you what paint I'm going to be trying, am I? I've got Doris the door and I've got, I'm going to introduce you to Dave, Dave the Door. Now, Dave the Door will be uh, demoing oil-based paints in the future. And when you're watching this, will be weeks on from when I actually filmed it. Dave the Door will be used um, for, I'm going to say the traditional sort of painting. I'm going to try and use Dave for oil-based paints. And in the future, when I've got enough paint on it, I want to show you how to burn off. Do you know what? I'm, I've seen people on TikTok, Instagram and all like that, and they have no clue on the procedure for burning off. That's my moan, so I'm going <laughs> to... That's for another video. Right, but for this video, we're using the Technos range of paint. Futura, it's the aqua-based system, so water-based, wash out with water. Um, this is the primer. We've got Doris there that you've seen in a video. Oh, oh God, it seems ages ago, ages ago since I did that. We did a, a water-based gloss, which was the fast flow. And then I followed up doing uh, adhesion primer over it for when we're doing the converting from gloss finishes, oil finishes to a water-based system. How I do it. I like to put a grit primer on. <sighs> Talking about that. Right. This water-based, the Technos water-based Futura. They're a micropores paint, you can use it inside and out. There's an adhesion property to it as well. And um, away you go. I'm gonna put a coat of this on, Doris the door. I'm gonna do half the door in this. And then we're gonna give it two coats of, I wanna try the gloss. I'm gonna give it two coats of the 90. Now, if you go on a scale of zero being flat as a pancake to 100 being the shiniest, glossiest surface you could possibly get, 90s for a water-based paint is a really, that should be a really glossy water-based paint finish. So I'm going to crack on. I'm not going to show you me painting the door. You've seen plenty of that. I'm going to tape up half the door. I'm going to paint with the primer let it dry and then I'll probably come back tomorrow and do the top coat and then the finished coat. We'll do a review as we go along. I don't want to be a 40 minute video on this, but I would like to try and show you that there are paints out there that are water-based that can be used inside and out, inside and out. Water paint, I know you're going, don't, don't talk stuff. We use a lot of water-based paint outside and I must say it does stand up as good if not better than oil-based paints. And I always argue how many times you go to an outside where you've got flaking paint and it's been oil-based. Well, it hasn't stood up, has it? And we always know south-facing south outsides always get the weather, but let's move on to water-based. Right, um, 
my next thing I just want to say, I'm going to give a shout out to um, Scott at Paint Monster. No sponsorship, unfortunately. No money's changed hands or anything like that. But Scott's been really good to me because I've managed to get my paint through Scott at Paint Monster. And you know how I reviewed some of the Nor. Yeah, I'm going to show you. The heritage brushes which i got from scott i'm going to say last year depends when you watch it i've managed to get a few more because i really like them so i've got some brushes from scott and at the same time i've managed to get me paint as well so i've killed two birds with one stone and you know what i'm like with new brushes You know what I'm like with new brushes. That's a new brush. I'm not going to be washing it out. I've done that to make sure there's no bristles coming out. But I'm going to get the primer out and I'm going to coat up half the door and let's see how we go. So um, see you in a little while. Right, I've got the primer out. Sniffing the bristle again. Um, paint smells a proper... Oh, proper paint smell, I'm not going to say anymore. Um, I'm going to do this half of the door because that half of the door top to bottom I'd like to try another paint that people are telling me to try that I've had to buy myself that is coming up in the future can you see oh, I've got my spotlight up that is coming up in the future I want to see what the difference in gloss levels like and also I want to see what these primers are like so I'm going to start with the primer I've got it in a proper kettle I'm seeing people, I've got no paint on the side. I'm seeing people, all they do is pack it in. Work from one side of the kettle, like I'm doing. Rotate your brush around on that one side of the kettle. Wipe your brush down on one side of the kettle there. Keeps that side clean for another day. And also, I don't end up with loads of paint on my hands. So, I'm going to start painting it. And I'll tell you what it's like when I've done it. Before anybody says, it has been nibbed down and it has been dusted off prior to the camera being turned on. Right, that was all fast forwarded. You had a little bit of music, music. Um, now I've used that straight out the tin because I quite like to use the paint straight out the tin. If that was going to be if that was going to be sprayed, you'd obviously be thinning it down. And people who are probably using this paint quite a lot are going to say to me, "Phil, just stick a bit of water into it." A bit like using Isomat, um, five to ten percent water into their paints to make it flow nicely. That is gospel truth. You've got to thin it down. Some of these paints might be exactly the same. I'm not sure. Give us some comments below. But for me to try it out straight out the tin, I want to see what it feels like. That went on lovely, and I know I'm going over that. Uh, what did he use? Uh, Ticarilla Otex Aqua. There's a grip primer there over that yellow gloss, but I want to see what that undercoat, this primer actually covers like, and it's actually covered really well. I'd be hard, hard pushed to see any grinning on that, showing any of that underlying surface, which is a big, big question and a big knock with professional painters and decorators that sometimes the primers and undercoats aren't covering off-white surfaces that they're going over. A bit like Dave the Door, that's an oil-based white gloss that now looks magnolia. We've got off-white colours here, that has covered lovely. So I'm going to say to you, I'm going to 
I'm going to have a night's sleep. This is water-based. You'll probably find it's touch drying an hour, let's safely in an hour, and probably recoat times about six hours, four to six hours. I'm going to leave it till next day and I'm going to get some of the uh, Futura 90, which is the gloss. I have also got the 20 as well, which I might try in a later video. So get a good night's sleep. I'm going to wash that out. Really like those Knorr brushes. And I say, I got these from Scott at Paint Monster. There'll be a link to Paint Monster uh, website if you're interested in that. Again, no sponsorship, no endorsement. They're just a nice brush. And also, Scott's a really nice guy. So thank you very much. All right, see you tomorrow. Morning, everybody. I'm up now to early. We're going to get a coat of Aqua. Futura 90. This is the water-based gloss from Technos. Now, I said to you uh, a few minutes ago, Finnish company, it's obviously a family-run business, been around since 1948, so um, good number of years. And um, when it comes to gloss levels, water-based paints, there's always that question mark, how good a gloss is it? A lot of them seem to look glossy when you apply it, but then you give it a day, few days, few weeks, that gloss level seems to, I don't want to use the word deteriorate, but it does seem to settle and level out to more of a high sheen finish and not so much of a gloss finish. And let's face it, you're only going to get a full shiny, 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 shiny gloss if you're using oil based. But when we're looking at a 90, we'll call that a 90% sheen level for gloss, I'm expecting High hopes, I've got high hopes, high hope. There's a song in there, I think, as well. Never mind. Now, there is one brand of gloss that people cringe at when I say, if you want a good gloss level from water-based paint, Farron Ball. Farron Ball's got a really good gloss level. Let's see if this is what I think it should be for a gloss level. Does that make sense? Well, anyway, right, it's, it's the next day. That primer which is just there um, aqua primer went on lovely application wise really nice and as i said to you i'm not thinning it if they need thinning dilute to taste if you need to but i want to see what they like out the tin because that's how i've done all the testing of all the paints out the tin see how they apply because anything anything that needs thinning you can thin once you know what it's like there's no point thinning the paint if you've not tried it, it's like putting salt and pepper on your Sunday dinner. How do you know you need salt and pepper on your Sunday dinner until you've tried it? Think about it. So anyway, that went on nice. Coverage is nice. I really wanted it going over that yellowy, mottled yellow to see how it actually, the coverage, the opacity. The only thing you can just see is the marker pen just bleeding through there slightly, which did you didn't see it. It's one of those things. I did spray some, um, oh, where is it? I'll show you what I had. I did have um, some blockade. That's the Smith & Rogers blockade in a rattle can. I've not got it with me because I've taken it on to another job to use, but I did blank out that. It's not supposed to cover. It's like an encapsulating. It puts a coating over it to stop it bleeding through. So I'm hoping that once I get the gloss on, that'll just lose it. It's probably more of the translucency, if that's the word, translucency of the primer that's probably still being, um, still allowing it to just show through. Not so much that it's penetrating and staining because it's a marker pen. But um, let's, uh, yeah, you know, you know I love saying it. Without further ado, Hugh, Pew, Barney McGrew, Cuthbert, Dibble and Grub, Campbellwick Green. Or was it Campbellwick Green, aren't it? Yeah, it's the fireman. Hugh Pugh, Barney McGrew. Yeah, I'm going to get coated up. I've got the gloss out. Semi kettle. I'm telling you again, no slapping from side to side. Yesterday, I worked from that side of the kettle. I'm now going to work from this side of the kettle. So we rotate it round because um, it's what you do. And I'm working from one side, just dib dabbing it, can you see what I'm doing, I can't, I'm dibbing on it, rotating the brush and that's how you pick it up, that's how you keep clean as well, right, let's crack on, I'm not nibbing it, I'll say it in a minute, I'm not nibbing it down because it's, it's lovely.
you know what? Let's try and get you back a bit. I've um, it's probably applied that a bit slower than it normally would do. Do you know what? That went on really nice. It's um, from what I can see because I've got the I've got my spotlight highlighting me. Can you see catch lights in my eyes? Look, I look like I'm a proper model, don't I? On a film, well, photo shoot set. Got catch lights in my eyes because that's my halo ring around my camera. Um, that gloss level, I'll bring you in later. That's really shiny. It's wet, so it will look really shiny. Application wise, that went on pleasant very pleasant and I'm just thinking how that's you know these brushes I'm gonna say try these oh, easy. it's the Nor Heritage they're actually a nice brush when you've got a big area this is a two inch big area you just want to apply the paint ideal um, get these from paint monster or google it um, went on really nice I'm gonna see how it is all the way down now so let's fast forward it and put some music to it. My neck on the line I'm gonna say I've over this last 12 months probably a bit more I've tried a lot of paints whether it's been on camera or whether we've been on jobs I'm gonna say that is one of the nicest paints I've applied that's given me a gloss so far it's wet it's given me a gloss finish with ease and you know what I mean, because I'm going to mention the Brush Killer, which is a cracking gloss, but with it being that, it's a proper hybrid, your brushes, you, you jiggy your brushes up. I'm not bothered what anybody says. It's, it's a faff cleaning your brushes out. This, let's, let's give it... Let's sum it up when we've got our second coat on because these water-based paints are a primer stroke undercoat and two top coats. So far, so good on that first top coat. I'm going to wash this brush out and the next time you'll see me, will be I'll probably have coated it up a second coat and I'll be discussing it. But so far, that, if I can zoom in... I can't, which way does my camera go? Can you see that? That gloss level between that flat finish, because that's got Otex Acver on it, that is a good gloss. Now, I'm going to say to you, if you're new to painting and decorating, or you're getting just into these water-based paints, don't be frightened to put enough paint on. I don't want it oodles of paint that you've got it running and you can't handle it. What I want you to do is apply it, Quickly crow's nest it and lay it off. Don't be faffing, don't be doing what you do with oil paint. Crow's nesting it, horizontal, laying it off, vertical, laying it with your length. Because if it was that panel, you'd apply it, put it on as much as you possibly can with your crow's nest action. Then you'd lay it off horizontally, then just wipe your brush down, tips of your bristles, lay off up and down. When you're working with water-based paints, get it on crow's nest it then quickly lay it off move on to the next bit you don't want to be playing with it that went on lovely and I'll keep looking at it it's a really good gloss well going back to it, if people if they're brushing it out you're not putting enough on and you want to get that build up of the paint film to, to be on the surface that keeps that retention of the gloss because there's enough paint there. If you're brushing it out and scrubbing it out, of course you're not going to get a good gloss level because you've not got enough paint there, have you? 
I'm liking it. I'm going to wash this brush out. All being well, it'll wash out as nicely as what the primer did, because the primer washed out nicely. As far as I'm aware, is it a hybrid? Isn't it a hybrid? Do you know what? If it is a hybrid and my brushes wash out, all right, I'm not bothered whether it is or not. If it is a straight acrylic and it washes out nicely, brilliant. But so far, I'm liking that. I'm trying these paints out because you know I'm going to be trying. I'm going to be trying that. I'm going to pitch this against that. We'll see what that's like. Pu, you got to see P, Pu gloss. I'm going to see what that's like against it with the correct primer. I've got a job coming up where the customers had proper full gloss, and it's a nice gloss, but it's yellow. You can see where dressing gowns have been on the backs of doors, coats, things like that. And it's left it with marks, i.e. it's yellowed in certain areas. I've told them I'm going to go for a water-based, but I need to get the right water-based gloss. And I think something like this would be more than suitable. Yeah, I'm going to wash and brush out. Hello my chickadees, I'm back. It's probably been, uh, let me just look at my watch. Um, I'd say a good 10 and a half hours to 11 hours since I um, blended out, came back with you. Now, when I'd, when I'd done that gloss in there, you can see it, it was a cracking gloss because it was wet. Now, this is one of the questions that I had about water-based paints. They all look fantastic. Everybody will show you a TikTok reel and a YouTube video or uh, an Instagram reel of them doing a a windowsill with water base doors flush doors with a water base product in gloss and it looks fantastic the reality is that's in a wet state when it's dry the real world reality is that has softened off I know this gloss is a 90 100 being the best gloss you can get this is a 90 that still looks shiny and you can see it We've got a good sheen, I'm going to say, not a gloss. We've got a good sheen level to it. Now I'm hoping that when I get this second coat on, I won't subject you to second coat. I'm hoping that that has gone like that because it's on its undercoat. And with the undercoat being a drier finish, I'm hoping that sheen level has been soaked in or taken into that undercoat. A bit like when you do spot priming and if you don't spot prime over filler and you emulsion a wall, it gets soaked in, it gets sucked in. The porosity of that surface sucks the paint in and you can see flashing. Basic principle. I'm hoping that the porosity of that undercoat has taken in that gloss level that we were seeing and I'm hoping now that that first coat of gloss has actually sealed all that and the second coat of gloss is going to give us something that's going to be, well let's just say, blown us away. Fingers crossed. But, I've told you, I'm going to be comparing it on this side to the PU gloss. So we'll be able to see what a PU gloss is like compared to the Futura. The Tura, the Tura 90, or the Technos. So, I'll speak to you about that. Let me crack on with this. I'll blend out and I'll speak to you at the end. I'm back. I've coated that up. It's on that side. Can you see that gloss level's back there again because it's a fresh, wet coat of paint. Now, I'm going to say the application of that, if you're a DIYer, or even, I don't want to say a child, a child could get this paint on. It's not running, it's not creeping on you. It goes on, it goes on beautiful, beautifully. There's no issue with the application of that. What I want to do is, do you know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to come back in an hour or so. Yeah, I'm going to come back in about an hour or so when that's gone off, like touch dry, because I've got a sneaky suspicion that gloss level that we're seeing now will dull off and uh, an example I want to give on that is I'm seeing a lot of people that don't understand about oil eggshells oil satin woods the self undercoating you coat as long as you've got a clean down surface I'm not on about bare surfaces I'm on about a previously painted surface you give it a clean down wash down if it's need needed 
uh, sand, dust off, and you give it two coats of eggshell, oil eggshell, or two coats of satin wood. It's self undercoating. If you use an oil undercoat or an acrylic undercoat, then try and just put one coat of um, oil eggshell on or oil satin wood because you're trying to speed up the process of getting two coats on in a day. The finish of that oil coat is never as good as if you do two coats of the same product, uh, the same paint, self undercoating. I've got a sneaky suspicion that's going to dull off. So I'm going to give it an hour and then I'm going to come back and give me a review because this is water based. Are we struggling to get a high gloss finish with water based? Probably we are, but let's see what this is like. Let's give it a fair, fair crack at the whip and let's see what it's like on itself. And this is where these water based paints need the primer stroke undercoat, then two top coats. You can't get away with just one gloss top coat or even satin. So, um, let me go and wash this out. It's warm, we've got nice um, sunshine. We're gonna see what it's like when it's dried off. And you know what? I'm on a roll now. I wanna get this side of the door done with the Caprol PU gloss and also use its half, call it half prime or half prime. Half primer. Is it German? I don't know, I'll find out before I come to do the review on that. So, um, my next video from doing this, we'll be doing it on that side and I want to compare two high-end quality paints that are in your budget to see what they're like. So let me go and wash my brush out. Catch you later. Hello, it's Phil. I'm back. You know my name's Phil because I tell you at the beginning. Right, we've been about an hour. So this stuff is touch dry right conditions an hour recoat time you're looking about six hours proper curing getting hard you know what i mean three to five days right what do i think my apprehensions were when we would put that first coat of gloss on it soaks into that primer stroke undercoat now that second coat of gloss is needed you can see the sheen look it's like it is a glossy surface it looks glossy whether we leave that a day and it settles down, I'll come back and review it when I do another video and mention it. But this, read the data sheet. This is a urethane, not polyurethane, urethane. It's got urethane and it's an alkyd water-based product. Now, if you don't know what an alkyd is, if you talk about alkyd paints, alkyd paints are oil-based paints. So there is a touch of something oily in this to give it the gloss level that we're seeing, quite possibly. And the urethane level is giving it your hard wearing. Right, and another paint that had urethane in it that I was really impressed with was that. Can you remember when I did a review on that? C oh, can you see it? I've got the light on it. The CIN, the C-I-N, A-C-Thane, urethane. That was a very good hard wearing paint. This will be exactly the same. Now, Mioni, Mioni Waver is, if I come back to that tomorrow, the day after, will I see that gloss level reduce? But to sum up, because I've, I've always said I don't want to do a 20, 30 minute video, but sometimes I've got to get the information out. I will say this is a lovely paint opacity coverage application are all spot on that undercoat went on really nice this went on really nice the top coat the first top coat and the second top coat applying it by that nice brush I can't I can't fault it I'm just gonna see what this is like longevity that word as well longevity longevity the longevity Will this harden off to a solid finish? Yes, I think it will do. Will it still stay as glossy as what you can see on there? I'm hoping so. But if I take that off and give a clean line down, oh, I'll do it another time. I'm gonna work up to that and let's see what another brand of paint is gonna be like against it. But on the whole, 
I'm liking it. Will I use this again? Yes, I will. Would I ask you to try it and see what your thoughts are and give me some comments? Please do. We're always a bit questionable about, oh, sounds like I've had a drink, questionable, questionable about using a water-based gloss. Is it one of the better ones I've used? Yes, it is. What does it look like compared to, if anybody's listening from Crown, I'd like to try your fast flow. If anybody wants to send me it in a fast flow undercoat and top coat in white, I'd like to pitch it against this because Crown would be a little bit cheaper paint and easier to get hold of than this. Is the Crown fast flow water-based gloss as good, if not better than this sheen level? Give some comments if you're using it. I don't want to compare this to the brush killer and you've seen the video there because I'm not liking how you have to wash brush out in the clean spirit, white spirit, methylated spirit, whatever spirit you want to, you know. But this, give it a go, see what you think. It's not a bad paint at all. I mean, quite impressed. Let's just see what that gloss level looks like when we've had a few days on it. We'll review that in another video. Thanks for listening to me. I can waffle on Conta. And by the way, I'm not Ricky Gervais. I'm liking that. See you on the next one.